So this is uh, about exploring and harnessing genomics. Uh, and uh, my conflict of interest is in the lower right, if you want to look it up on the web. Um, we have, um, we're in the midst of an exponential uh, and even a changing, uh, ever increasing exponential. So uh, we've improved in just a decade, 20 million fold in terms of cost and uh, maybe 100,000 fold in quality for reading of genomes and a similar uh, for uh, writing and editing of genomes. So now the human genome is $300 when it used to be $3 billion for a much poorer, low quality, uh, not uh, clinically useful one. And this has mostly been due to multiplexing and we'll, and we'll refer to multiplex, molecular multiplexing multiple times because it can be used for cells, reading and writing of all sorts of biology. Now, one kind of that's, uh, that's much in everybody's mind is editing. And we're adopting the broad set of editing, which includes addition of genetic material, subtraction, which is what mostly what CRISPR does is subtraction, precise editing and epigenetic uh, modifications. And there are um, many different uh, enzymes involved in these different steps. But the key cha challenge in general is delivery of these enzymes to the right cells in the right location in the genome. Um, so uh, huh. so, so uh, we're going to talk about two topics related to viruses, because that's in everybody's mind as well. Um, eliminating all viruses from a particular species both endogenous and exogenous. So many of us carry around uh, viruses from birth. And then we'll go on to harnessing viruses for good purposes. Uh, we're not just talking about COVID. There's influenza, there's swine fever virus. There are even viruses that, that will immobilize factories um, for, for a couple of years, even though ent entirely contained within sterile uh, media. Um, one strategy for getting rid of all viruses, uh, getting making resistance to all viruses is by codon recoding, taking one or two or more codons uh, and completely remapping them to a synonymous codon. These are the 64 uh, tr triplet codons uh, that, that uh, of the genetic code. Um, you can reduce that to 63 or more. We've, we've, we've done, uh, we've made a recoded organism one so far. It is highly resistant to um, almost all viruses. And we're on, on our way to applying this to multiple organisms and, and all viruses. And these are some of the uh, work of Nili Ostrov is currently leading this effort in her uh, recent science paper. Um, and here's some data showing uh, work, work from Farron Isaacs, who's been on this, involved in this project since the very beginning, uh, and, uh, where here are multiple different uh, viruses in this industrial microorganism, E. coli. Um, each of these zeros indicates that even at very high vitor, viral titers of uh, up to a trillion uh, platforming units per milliliter drop down to undetectable uh, levels uh, in these uh, strains that have been codon remapped and um, and deleting uh, an essential factor that previously was undeletable. So this is a way where making a, a large number of changes in the genome um, makes you resistant to all or nearly all viruses. And we think it's generalizable to any organism. Um, so uh, another example closer to, to, well, in humans and used in gene therapy was, um, manip is manipulating the receptors for viruses. This is one virus at a time in contrast to the previous example where we were doing um, all at once. And here you, you ha it has to be a receptor which you can live without or, or the, the, the particular cell type involved can live without. In this case, T cells can live without their CCR5, which is part of the HIV uh, receptor complex. Um, and you can knock out the gene for CCR5 with any of a variety of nucleases, including zinc fingers, talons, and CRISPR. And, uh, and this, is, this is in um, phase two clinical trials, looking promising. So, um, we, so that's one gene at a time. And uh, before that, I showed you 
hundreds of genes, 320 genes at a time. Now here's something in between, but again, in the mammalian system that's aimed at human uh, health. These are solving the transplantation crisis where you know, millions of people could benefit from some sort of cell therapy or organ therapy. We've created what we call PIG version 3.0, where we have um, 42 changes in the genome. Uh, 25 of them involve uh, getting rid of the endogenous viruses. Remember, I mentioned that many of us, many organisms, including humans and pigs, have endogenous retroviruses, which are quite um, potentially quite serious, and especially an immune suppressed patient where you suddenly get a new uh, uh, a pig uh, organ, you, you need to be uh, cautious of those viruses. We, we also had to make the pigs immune compatible so, uh, and uh, biochemically compatible. So three different kinds of sugars, clotting factors, the major histocompatibility, a locus which has to be matched in general. And these are these series of science and nature um, BME papers. Jim Markman has tested these organs at the MGH and they're looking promising in um, non-human primate trials. And then uh, Luhan Yang was elemental in getting uh, CRISPR working at all as a technology and then also in, in these uh, multiplex pig editing. And these two companies, and she co-founded these two companies, Kihan Biotech and Agenesis. Uh, the, that's 42, but now the record, uh, so we've mentioned 320, one and 42. Now the record is uh, over 22,000, and this is in human pluripotent stem cells. Um, and in this case, we are using uh, deaminase where we're changing A's to G's. We're not making a double strand break. In fact, any kind of double strand or break or nick is lethal, um, very, very toxic at this number of edits per cell. And so we use this very subtle A to G. Even the, the, the C to T, which is another kind of um, deaminase editing is, uh, is fairly toxic, but not nearly as bad as a, a nick or a break. Anyway, so this, and we're looking for outliers. Outliers can then be used in a clonal manner um, for various applications. So, so let's talk about um, harnessing viruses for good uses. Um, so we have various gene therapies. I've, I've shown you one already, which is a CCR5. Here's another one that's, that's uh, um, on everybody's mind, which is CAR T cells. To make CAR T cells immune or compatible in a biochemical sense, including immunological sense, <clears throat> we, uh, we knock out various genes. And here's a list of five genes, and there are more that Various subsets of these can be knocked out, in particular T cell receptors, the beta 2 microglobulin part of the MHC, uh, PD1, and so forth. These um, are not part of the receptor that's attacking, uh, this is used for treating um, blood, to, uh, blood cancers like uh, B cell leukemia. Um, and these help, help the the uh, T, T cells that are attacking the B, the B cell cancer to do their job um, and not um, get eliminated by either the chemotherapeutic or, or by the host immune system. And this again had been done with all the major nuclease families, zinc, finger, talon, and CRISPR. And this little girl was one of the first recipients back in 2015 from the Selectus talon. Um, now that's an example of a gene therapy we want to deliver. The, way, the preferred way of delivering is via uh, AAV for, for many purposes. Um, and to improve AAV, AAV has two problems. One is um, antibodies in the host uh, will recognize it if you've ever been exposed to AAV, and, and most of us have been. Furthermore, you want to get either tissue-specific delivery or we want to get uh, you know, a new, new specificity or we want to get broad specificity. And we do this by, we can make uh, millions of mutations. These are designed, these are not random mutations. And these design mutations are implemented by DNA synthesis. And then we can do selection DNA sequencing. And then we use machine learning, it's very important. Neither machine learning alone, nor these libraries of mutants alone is enough. Putting them together, we're, we're uh, able to take very big steps in improving the AV for both immune evasion and for uh, tissue targeting. 
And this is work for Pierce and Eric, which is published in Science, and it's just, they started Dino Therapeutics. So here's some data from that showing tissue tropism, how it varies with the virus. So the position along the viral genome, just a little, this is just a little snapshot, a little piece of it, uh, is uh, along the x-axis, along y-axis, is every possible change in every codon. So every possible amino acid substitution, for example. And you can see red is where they're particularly working better than normal, and blue is where they're it's been a deleterious mutation. And you can see the spectrum, the heat map is different for each of these six different tissue types. Now that, uh, that can be done, this is done being systematically changing each amino acid one at a time. But if we wanna change it, radically change the genome, we can change up to 29 mutations at a time, probably more, but it used to be hard to change more than four at a time because that would cause the virus or the protein or the organism to, to, to die. Um, but now with machine combination of these libraries of machine learning, we can get up to 29 at once. And this is just kind of like a little icon for the uh, you know, convolutional neural net uh, and recurrent neural nets that we use for uh, this kind of uh, um, operation. So, so just... Uh, in summary, the, the key to a lot of the uh, cost and quality improvement has been molecular multiplexing, where you mix uh, samples in a, uh, with a barcode tag, a molecular tag, and then you can do all the processing steps as if it were a single sample. So if you've got a billion or a million samples mixed, um, then you take it through as many steps as you want, and it will be the same volume and the same price and everything uh, as if you were doing one. Uh, so that that's far better than uh, parallelizing because if you just fill a room up with identical machines, it's not going to save any money per operation. Um, while molecular multiplexing is, is why we're 10 million, 20 million times uh, more efficient. And then we've applied that kind of multiplexing, both reading and writing, to making uh, libraries and examining them for uh, ways to eliminate all viruses, both endogenous and exogenous, like the endogenous retroviruses in the pig organs, or, um, or all possible viruses in the case of uh, E. coli and soon human. And, uh, and then finally, harnessing the AAV for uh, gene delivery and looking through million libraries of millions of AAVs for the, the right combination.